Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp YouTube channel and in this video I'm going to show you that how you can perform navigation in SysUI when you are using a tab view control or a tab view component. So I've already written a little bit of code. You can see we have a tab view and inside the tab view we have two different views, the doctor screen and the patient screen. The doctor screen does have a tab item, which you can see, just a plus sign. And the patient screen has a heart. If I select the patient tab, it simply shows me the patient screen, which is basically this screen, the patient screen. So I can switch back and forth between these two different tabs. If you look at the implementation of the doctor screen and the patient screen, it's pretty simple. Doctor screen is simply a view, contains VStack, text, and a button. Patient screen, much more simpler than that. It only has a text view, which is simply saying patient screen. So now the question is, how can I go to a list or a route programmatically when I am using tabs? Now, if you use a single navigation stack, like if I wrap everything with a navigation stack, then the problem you will face in this scenario will be that when you are on a particular doctor screen and you go to a list, so let me draw it out for you. So if this is the doctor screen, I'm just gonna say doctor screen, and you go to the doctor list, we'll just call it DL, doctor list, right? then you should be able to go from one screen to the other programmatically. But when I switch the tab, which is now the patient screen, so I'll call it patient screen, it shouldn't display me the doctor screen or the doctor list, nothing like that. And it should be at the root level because I haven't really navigated anywhere from the patient screen because the navigation only happened for the doctors and not the patients. So if I use a single navigation stack, that might cause some issues because navigation stack will have to pass in the path and this will be an array of routes. And if you use just one of them, then both the tab item for doctor screen and the tab item for patient screen, they both use the, if they both use the same routes array, then it gets really ugly because you need to separate the navigation based on the tabs. So we can't really use this particular scenario. When you're using multiple tabs, and each tab will allow you to go further into the hierarchy or perform different navigation, like from over here in the doctor screen, I can press this go to list and I should be taken to a doctor list screen or something like that. So what I can do is I can wrap these things with a navigation stack. So I'm gonna wrap this with a navigation stack and making sure that the tab item applies to the navigation stack. Because if you put this tab item like before on the doctor screen, then you can see that the actual tab item is gone. So make sure that you're applying the tab item on the navigation stack itself. So that's what I'm doing now. There we go. Same exact thing we're gonna do for adding a navigation stack for our patient screen. Now, since we have multiple navigation stacks for one for doctor screen and one for patient screen, this means that doctor screen and wherever you're going to go from the doctor screen, the actual flow, the hierarchy, that will be captured by this navigation stack and anywhere in the patient screen that you will go, you, this will be handled by this navigation stack. So now the question is, how can we keep them separate? Well, one of the ways to, one of the ways is to create a router. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a router. And apart from the router, what we can also do is we can you know, create an enum that is going to represent 
different cases, like for doctor, you're going to go somewhere, and for patients, you're going to go somewhere. Now, this is fine. You have the route for the doctor and for the patient. But what we also want to do is doctor can have their own routes, right? So I can go ahead and create doctor routes. And doctor can list, doctor can create. The same thing we will do for patient routes. I think creating these nested, you know, or much smaller enums like doctor routes and patient routes, uh, that will definitely allow us to uh, use it much better because if we have a new route for doctors that has nothing to do with patient, then we can simply add the route over here. And also I'm going to go ahead and say detail where you can pass in the doctor. Doctor is simply a struct, nothing more. We also need to make sure that this is all hashable. So let's go ahead and make sure, hashable, hashable, and hashable. Now, over here we have these different routes, right? We have doctor and we have patient in the routes. But we also need to make sure that what view you're going to display. So what I can do is I can go ahead and switch on self, And for doctor routes, we are going to return the, well, make sure that it takes doctor routes because we need to get access to those. And for here, we're going to say patient routes. So over here, what we can do is we can get the routes. So we'll get the routes. And or in this case, it would be a route, I guess. So route.destination. All right. And now there is no such thing as destination. So we're going to fix that part. And over here, we'll have the route, which will say route.destination. The destination is actually the view that where you want to go. Now go to the doctor routes and the patient routes and go ahead and return those particular views. So I can go ahead and say over here destination which is going to be some view. Switch on self for list. I'm just going to go ahead and say doctor list. For create, I'm simply going to say doctor create. For detail, I'm going to say doctor detail. And then just uh, print the name, I guess, so of the doctor. So we doctor.name and also this destination make sure that you use view builder and the reason that you use view builder is that right now we're returning all the all the text views over here but in reality these will be completely different views this will be like doctor list screen and doctor create screen doctor detail screen so make sure that you're using view builder you should do probably the same exact thing for patient routes for list, I will say patient list. For create, I'll say patient create. Okay, that's actually pretty good. So now we have created a route and we have multiple cases for the route. We have the doctor, we have the patient. The route itself does have a destination. And when you call destination, it simply, you know, delegate that stuff to the smaller routes like doctor routes and patient routes and it just uses the destination property in the doctor routes and patient routes and then the doctor routes patient route destination property simply return you the view so make sure that you replace these views with your actual view like i mentioned it will be doctor list screen doctor create screen doctor detail screen patient list screen and so on Next, we are over here in the router. And in the router, first of all, I'm going to mark this with observable. And we will go ahead and create two different arrays over here. So this will be, we'll call it doctor routes. Okay. We'll initialize it with empty array. So all the routes for the doctor will be managed over here. 
then we have patient routes patient routes there we go so now we have a class which is observable and it has two different arrays why we have two different arrays well we have two different arrays because remember the doctor route should only contain the doctor routes the patient route should only contain patient routes and these routes should not interfere with each other because they are part of the tabs for doctors and patients or completely different tabs different history once we have created the router we can inject it so i'm going to inject it as an environment so that i can access it in all of my views okay so that's injected in the preview let's go back over here currently the navigation is not really going to work because the only way the navigation works is if you implement the navigation destination so navigation destination over here we are going to be listening for a specific thing uh, what thing are we trying to listen to well let's just say for doctors I'm just gonna listen to doctor routes dot self we'll get the route and then we can return route or destination and we will have a similar thing for patient routes. Patient routes. Route dot destination. Now, over here you can see in the navigation stack, we haven't really used the path property. So this means that this is not really going to work right now. So I can go over here and I can say environment. By the way, there is something called navigation path also, uh, which boxes everything. And uh, maybe in the future, we can definitely take a look at that. Uh, so I'm going to use the router over here, router.self. So this is how I'm going to access the router. Now in the navigation stack for the first one, this is only for the doctor routes. So I'll say router dot doctor routes. Now, one of the things you will see over here is that it's saying the error, it's saying that we cannot find the binding for the router, which is kind of weird because when you use observable, right, these are all published properties. So these are all bindable. But since we are using environment over here, uh, we can directly bind to it. So the one of the ways to bind to it is to use bindable and move the value into bindable and then we'll be able to bind to it all right as you can see that now the error is no longer there let's go over here supply the path for the patient routes router dot patient routes perfect and that's pretty much it let's go to our doctor screen because right now the navigation is not going to work because we haven't implemented the button click. So if I go to the button over here, I can access through the environment. I can access the router, router.self, private var router. And I can say router dot. And now I can inject these things. So I can go over here. And I can say router dot doctor routes dot append new element which is list. Okay, so this means when I click on this router dot router dot doctor routes dot append, it will just show me the list. So if I click on it, you can see it goes to doctor list. All right. Now at this point, there can be like, okay, why are we using the destination? Uh, over here in our route. I mean, what's the point of the route over here? Can we just remove the route? I mean, we're not even using it anywhere, right? Right, so that is one of the questions. So let's let's actually remove the route. I mean, let's see what happens. I mean, we're, we're not even using it. Let's go ahead and build it. All right, okay, that looks fine and now, if I go to go to list, it still works. So all of that work of creating the route, we didn't even need in that part, all right? And when I'm on the patient, let's go ahead and display 
patient screen, which we are, and in the patient screen, this one, maybe we can display something. So let's go ahead and embed VStack. And what should we say over here? A button, probably. Go to create screen. Again, it's going to be the similar way that we did it for the doctor screen. We'll use the router dot patient routes dot append dot create. So on the doctor screen, I'll go to the list. If I go to the patient screen, you can see the patient screen is not uh, the one with the back button. It's if I go to the doctor, you can see the back button because it has already moved from one screen to the other screen. It's keeping track of the navigation history. If I go to the patient screen, I can go to the patient screen and then create my own navigation history, which is separate from the doctor screen. See that? So if I'm on the patient screen, I go back. That doesn't do anything to the doctor list. I'm still at doctor list and I can go back and I can go forward. So this can be one of those ways that you can create or you can separate out the navigation between different tabs. And this is a, quite a simple way because we ended up just creating a router and you know in the router we just use doctor routes and patient routes. If I had another tab, let's say uh, whatever staff routes, then I'll create another or another tab. Uh, I'll create a tab and then I'll create another staff routes and then I can work with it. All right. So this solution is fine if you want to use it. Now there is another solution which is a little bit more advanced where you don't really create separate routes and you end up just creating one route. All right. Now, if you want to learn more about that, if you want to learn more about that particular technique, then go to azamsharp.school. If you click on this Adam Sharp Pro member content, this one, you will see, and this is only for pro members, this, the managing independent navigation stacks and tab you using a custom router. So this is a 25 minute video where I discuss that how you can, instead of creating multiple arrays for each of these routes, you can actually create a single array uh, based on the tab. So if you're looking for a much better solution, so it's right there. Uh, this is for pro members only, Adam Sharp pro members. So check out adamsharp.school and you can become a pro member as you can see over here. Uh, so you can subscribe for $29 a month to become a pro member, all right? And uh, this video, is sponsored also by Adam Sharp School. You should definitely check out Adam Sharp School. This is actually the one of the largest catalogs for iOS development videos in the world. I mean, there are so many different, you can see different courses available. Now, one of the course people are really excited about and they're taking is this Skip Fundamentals course. So they're really loving it. And you can see the course list just goes on and on and on forever. And apart from the courses, I also host workshops. I just finished hosting the workshop on machine learning. It was really nice. And you know, the attendees, they loved it. The new workshop that is coming up is on Swift data fundamentals, where I will talk about the architecture, relationships, uh, testing, cloud kit integration. I mean, this is a great workshop. And if you go to you know, a conference, we're talking about thousands of dollars, right? So you can attend this workshop at the comfort of your house. Uh, you can reserve your spot for $129. So this is a great workshop and I hope I'll, I'll see you over there. All right. So thank you so much. And if you like this video on YouTube, make sure that you uh, like and subscribe and share. And again, spread the word about AdamSharp.school. Thank you so much.